This morning for breakfast, I was given powdered eggs with plain bread, and the coffee was miserable. But the food wasn't the only thing that spoiled my appetite. You see, I'm in jail. It's only been a few weeks, but already it seems like a long time since I lived in another world. The everyday world that I took so much for granted. I was what you would call an ordinary, upstanding citizen, with an ordinary mortgaged house in the suburbs. But if everything else was ordinary about me, I had an extraordinary wife and children. I never knew how extraordinary until all of this happened. I was sales manager of a small manufacturing concern. And although we didn't consciously try to keep up with the Joneses, we lived very well, had more than the usual debts, and not much in savings. I had a good insurance program to help look after the family. We were covered for fire, theft, illness, death. I thought I was covered for anything that could happen. I never thought about the possibility of being removed from the scene by the law. <laughs> like the rest of our close friends, we entertained on a relatively modest scale. And like our friends, we tried to serve good food. And good drinks. I don't think there were more than one or two of us who weren't fairly casual about liquor. <laughs> Although sometimes we reached the point of no pain, we were seldom too much affected to drive, or so we thought. I know I was always concerned about driving while under the influence. And I was never a very serious drinker. I used to quit long before it was time to go home. So when I got behind the wheel, I would be more or less sober. I suppose like the average person, I couldn't see much difference in my coordination or my reaction time. Even after a few drinks, I always felt I had the situation under control. Since I was convicted and sentenced, I've learned more about the subject. It's a perfectly simple process. Alcohol passes from your stomach into your bloodstream, where it goes on to your brain and your central nervous system. Your weight, how recently you've eaten, and other things affect the rate of absorption. But while some experienced drinkers have learned to control their actions and may not appear really intoxicated, the speed with which alcohol begins to have its effect on the brain and nerve centers varies only slightly from one person to another, in spite of appearances. As I found out from my own case, the last functions to be developed in us as human beings, judgment, conscience, and moral values, are the first to be affected. When this happens, inhibitions are released, while muscular reaction has been slowed. We tend to feel equal to any situation. It's during this period of no restraint and unwarranted confidence, coupled with dulled perception and impaired physical ability, that any drinking driver attains his peak of hazard and is ready to become a traffic statistic. That's what happened to me. A friend of ours was celebrating a big promotion. We were still on cocktails and hadn't eaten yet. I didn't expect to leave the party until late, and I wasn't the least concerned about the problem of driving. Mary, telephone. Then we got a call from the babysitter. She had taken sick, and we had to rush home. We hated to leave, but the idea of driving didn't bother me. At that point, I felt I was the best driver in the world. Everything went smoothly, 
as it had many times before. And then just a few blocks from home, a light went against me when I was almost into the intersection. I tried to make it anyway. shock would completely sober a drinker. It doesn't. I was under the influence. It was a nightmare. I didn't feel intoxicated, but I was booked as a felony drunk driver. My first night was spent in the drunk tank at the main jail. If I had preserved anything of human dignity to this point, it deserted me now. I don't remember the next sequence of events too clearly, but I remember my wife. She had her own nightmare to live through, and I know it was worse than mine. Somehow, she made me realize we would live through all this, back to real life again. And my attorney, who had the problem of preparing my defense, gave me to understand that I was fortunate, for even though the girl I had struck would be hospitalized for months, I received what he considered a moderate penalty. But I wonder if I'll ever forget the judge's voice. The court has taken this into consideration. And therefore, I sentence you to a term of one year in the state penitentiary. The court further recommends that due to the Only a year. I was lucky. And yet, is it a year we will ever recover from? With our other debts, we won't be able to keep the house. My wife has had to go back to work. What about my own job? Well, I'll have to look for a new one. Will I have to start at the bottom again? What about the young girl I struck? Will she be permanently crippled? They don't know yet. I'm grateful to my insurance man and the liability coverage that we're hopeful will take care of everything. But what is my responsibility to her beyond that? I haven't been able to think anything out. My mind keeps going back to that afternoon. It's futile to wish I hadn't tried to drive or that I hadn't taken the last couple of cocktails. But I know that if I ever get behind the wheel of a car again, I will remember something I had lost sight of. Driving a car has become so effortless that you have the feeling of complete control. Man and machine are one. You forget you have no control over the other drivers or the pedestrians. Even when I was cold sober, I was taking too much for granted. I'm taking it for granted that the car signaling for a left turn will not move until I'm through the intersection. The car backing into the street will wait until I'm safely past. The driver at the curb will not pull away or open his door and step out while I'm approaching. Every day, I was practicing bad driving habits. Every day, I was taking chances. And the last time I drove, the worst chances I took were served in cocktail glasses. My life, the lives of my wife and children, had to be set back for years to prove to me that these, like any risks when it comes to driving, are chances not worth taking. But in our language, if chance means risk, it also means opportunity. And every driver who still has not taken one chance too many still has an opportunity to begin practicing good driving habits. 
to lessen his chances of ever running into trouble with his automobile. <laughs>